good day. I was gonna say good morning, but I don't know what it is for you. I have my rooibos tea. I think I'm, I'm just in a rooibos tea phase right now, and I have my spiritual wake up. And I'm eating an Uncrustable for breakfast. Um, I will not be taking any critique. As always, my cat Chili Kids. As always, I look presentable on top, but I got the sweats on. Don't you worry, we don't play. But happy day, cozy family, cozy pals. I have a new candle burning. It's not the coffee one. That one went kaput. Pumpkin churro. Not at all seasonally appropriate, but it is what it is. And today I'm going to talk about how I create a cozy space wherever I am. So some of these things are things that I do to just create a general cozy space in my home. And other things are like when I just want to be a cozy bitch, you know? So I'm going to break it up into the five senses. So smell, sight, touch, sound, taste. Mainly because I, I really enjoy drawing the little title cards on Procreate. But also it'll just make it easier to kind of understand. First is smell, which is really important to me at least, because smell can instantly change my mood. Like, I can be upset, smell a, a holiday candle, day's great, day's fine. I, I might as well do something productive for once, I don't know, whoa. And then if I'm in a good mood, and I walk into the bathroom, and it doesn't smell ideal, it doesn't smell like fresh fruit, I might as well go back to bed. I'm going, day's over, I'm going back to bed. As you can tell, scent's important to me. So creating a cozy space with scent, you can do either with 10 million candles, like I do, or you can invest in like a diffuser, or you can get a cheap diffuser like I have in my bathroom, and use essential oils if that's more your speed. This is one of my favorites. Capri Blue has a volcano candle, which is really popular. They sell it at Anthropology, but it's expensive. Like I would get that candle all the time, but it's expensive. But the diffuser oil is like a way better value for like the same price, basically. Like it fills the room with volcano-y goodness, but it is way longer lasting than the actual candle. So onto candles. I just really quickly want to tell you after years of trial and error, where to get the best candles. Three places, ready? TJ Maxx Empire, Marshall's Home Goods TJ Maxx. Amazing candles. They have the DW home ones where they have like every scent un under under the sun, every scent imaginable. You think of a scent, they have it. There's just something spiritual about being in that candle aisle for hours and smelling every single candle. I don't know what. It's transcendent. You find yourself there. Wow, I, I need to might be down for a Marshall strip. The next place is Michael's. The place I get construction paper. Yes, the place you get construction paper. I don't know why. I don't know what worker at the Michael's candle factory is dumping essential oils into the candle, but as soon as you take the lid off, it smells like it's you don't even have to light it. It smells amazing. I use them on my outdoor patio because that's how well the scent disperses. They also have like seasonal scents and oh, lights my soul on fire. And the last place is Bath and Body Works, but huge, huge, huge disclaimer. Only, and I mean only when it's their semi-annual sale. Do not buy their three wick candles if it's not their semi-annual sale. If you do, you're a sweet, sweet, sweet goddamn fool. I love you, you're beautiful, but you're a sweet fool. Those are the three places you can get candles where like, they're not natural, you probably will get a disease when you're older. If you're looking for something that won't give you a disease when you're older, I have a couple shops for you. The first is this place called Soy Panda, and they reached out to me on Instagram, and this isn't sponsored or anything, like they just said, do you wanna try some candles? And I said yes, and, I'm gonna buy some candles because all of these look amazing. I can't help myself. I have no self-control. And it's just a small business and she's so sweet and nice. I'm just gonna read to you a few of the scents. Bear Hug. Tea House. Tea House. That is like my dream scent. Night Market. Lazy Sunday. Ooh. Cozy Brunch. Clean Sheets. Garden Stroll. And here's my favorite. I might be weird for this, but this is my favorite. Veggie Garden. If I don't want my kitchen to smell like tomato leaves, summer herbs and fresh cucumber every day, I don't know if I'm okay. <sighs> so that's that company. Another one is Otherland. I'm gonna preface it by it's expensive, but they have the coolest scents. This one is the only full price one I got. The other ones I got off Mercari for like half the price, but this is cardamom milk and it's frothy milk cardamom praline woods. Amazing. Another one is Freshwater pearl, which is sea crystal, salt water, and crushed shells. This sounds like an ad for it, but it's not. <laughs> I just think they're really cool. And going back to the TJ Maxx Empire, 
they have soy candles, they do. And the best one is Storm. This is a dupe of the volcano candle I talked about earlier. If you can find these, if you can find these at a, at a TJ Maxx Empire store, you're a lucky SOB, I'll tell you what. These are always, always out of stock. It's the only candle expertise I have. I don't have a lot of expertise, but I do have candle expertise. If you have any candle knowledge that I don't know, please share. Please share it. Do me a solid. I need to know. Oh, and the last candle thing I have to say, I got yelled at on TikTok for not trimming my wick, and I promise I have the tools for it. I just forget to do it sometimes because I'm so excited about my candles. I'll link a um, Amazon link for this set of candle tools. It comes with a wick trimmer. A wick, that's what it's called, a wick trimmer. And then this tool, I I thought it, so it's also, it's like, are you okay? Okay. But if your wick is doing this thing to scoop it out but also you can use it and there's wax and I'm sorry you can use it to pull wax onto the wick so that you don't have to blow it out and it leaves less smoke and you can smell the candle for longer but they also have this which is like a little snuff is that what it's called I don't know the candle out with this so if you want to be a good candle parent get this. You don't want to do either of those and you want to do something even more natural. You can do simmer pot. I only do these in the fall and holiday season, but you just slice up oranges, apples, you put in cloves, you put in cinnamon, and you put in vanilla extract. And if you have cranberries, you can put those in too. And you just simmer it on the stove and it smells so good. It makes your whole house smell amazing. You do have to like watch it because the stove is on, but it's amazing. The last smell thing, I, it, the smells are so long because I love smells. But the last thing is perfume. I, mean, I can talk about perfume for hours, hours, days. My collection is getting to the point where it might be a problem. I think it is. The only thing I have to say about perfumes now is to find a kind of light, warm, cozy scent and put it on before bed. Yes, put it on before bed or put it on before you get on your couch and cuddle up. And not only will your surroundings feel cozy, but like you yourself will feel cozy. You'll be like, ooh, is that me? Ooh, it's amazing. Two recommendations I have. Honey and Cream by Philosophy and Comptoir Sud Pacific. They have a lot of vanilla scents, but Vanille Extreme just smells like vanilla just pure vanilla like cake or something and if you put those on oh you feel so cozy also by the fireplace by mason margella is a really popular one i'm just not a fan of like a little more like earthy scents but it's really popular and it literally smells like you're sitting by a fireplace so so next i want to talk about touch i have two home things and one body thing the two home things are blankets and a rug. I'll show a little clip of the rug I have in my place now. Before I had a much smaller rug and something just felt like off. It was small and it was kind of like that thin material and it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel like a cozy space. And so I got a huge rug and I got a wool shag rug that's super soft and comfy. So now when you're entering the room, it feels like this huge cozy space you're entering. Like the whole room is cozy and it feels a lot more, I guess, cohesive and just the softness of the rug makes such a difference that I didn't think it would. And the thing I have to say about blankets is don't be stupid like me and just buy blankets because they're aesthetically pleasing. Cause I did that, I just bought a bunch of really cool looking blankets and then I never used them cause they were like scratchy or like they didn't actually provide any warmth at all. Get blankets because they're nice looking but mostly because they're soft and warm. And that sounds obvious but some of us are a little too focused on the aesthetics, okay? As soon as I did that, I had my favorite blankets. So now I have like a basket of blankets over here that I don't use and they're just like, are they to look cute? But like this one, this baby, oh, I use this baby. She's soft and she's pretty. Oh, and if you don't have a heated throw, get one now. Get one now, get one now. What are you waiting for? Heated throw. It's just the peak of blanket functionality. Warm, but extra warm. I mean, Get one, please. And then my last one for touch is moisturizer. I know it's weird to be like, just put on moisturizer. Like, but the process of putting on a moisturizer on your body and like taking that moment of self-care, it's like almost self-soothing, but it's also providing your skin and body something beneficial. But that, that whole process will put you like in a relaxed, cozy state and you feel soft and you just get in the couch or the bed and you're like, mm, I just took care of myself a little bit. And if that's the only thing you do all day, that's a dang good thing to do, and good job. The next sense is taste. This one's pretty obvious, but get something good. Get something really good, really tasty, and put it in your mouth. 
Yep. But for real, like think of your comfort foods, think of your comfort snacks. Like what are you eating when you feel the most warm and comforted and like you're getting a hug? Is it like comfort food that your parents made? Is it like a snack you find when you're at the store and you're like, ooh, my favorite snack? Whatever it is, make sure you're decently stocked up on it so that whenever you're in a cozy mood, you can just grab it. Or or when you're in a not good mood and you want to be in a better mood, grab it, do that little do that little thing for yourself. Do that little treat. One of mine might be an Uncrustable, which is maybe what I'm eating right now. Um, but for real, mine is like tea, which I think everybody's is. I'm just trying new teas and trying different teas and throughout the, I have so many teas throughout the day, but I'm like, ooh, this hour I'm going to have this kind of tea. And it's just so fun and like comforting. And that's really it. That's taste. Not a lot more to talk about. So I realized as I was editing that I left out all of sight. <laughs> so I'm going to do that now. And this is an outfit you will see later because I'm filming it as I'm filming other things. Bear with me, I'm still learning these things. My tips for sight, one is to tidy up your space. I say this very loosely. By tidying up your space, that could mean just shoving the pile of clothes that's out in your room, like under your bed or in a closet. But just getting that pile of clothes, that's also like a reminder of all of the other 10 million things you have to do, out of your line of sight, you will feel so much more calm and cozy. If you do have it in you to tidy up, just tidy up. Some people, they might not see it, but they'll know it's there and they'll still be thinking about it. So just take that time if you have it in you that day. And my next tip is to use neutral colors as a backdrop. And this is not to say don't use the colors you want to use. If you like neon pink and neon green, use those colors. Just use neutral colors as a backdrop. So like for example, in my bedroom, I have cream linen sheets and then I have kind of a deep red red throw which creates an overall like warm serene vibe to any room and maybe that's just me and maybe that's not for you and you feel calmed by something else in that case do what you like to do and last if something doesn't feel right rearrange it it took me like two tries to get this room right we used to have the couch on the complete opposite wall now we flipped the room 180 so now we're looking out the windows and we're kind of up against this wall it just feels a lot more cozy and a lot more inviting you know just little things like that just if you have to look up feng shui if you have to look up whatever you have to look up or just like trial and error just see what works for you and rearrange your room until it feels right until it feels absolutely peak cozy the last one is sound put on whatever makes you feel comforted and i'm only talking about this because i want to expel the notion that murder mystery podcasts and crime podcasts are not cozy because you know what they are and i will die on this hill when i need to wind down a crime podcast does the dang trick but my favorites are crime junkie a new one i just discovered i don't know how is rotten mango she'll do real retellings of things but then she'll also like retell movies sometimes or like a fictional story and it's it sounds like something you wouldn't want to hear if you're normally like a true crime person but it's really interesting so if you're crazy like me use that to wind down and don't feel bad about it don't be like this is cozy time i only have to listen to like meditation music absolutely not you can do that that's valid that's fine but listen to what you like listening to if if true crime does it, I support you, baby. Also wanted to point out, you don't have to listen to anything. Sometimes silence puts me in a cozy mood. Sometimes I just wanna like zone in on something, whether it's like a show or whatever, and not hear anything else. Silence. And part of that, which I'm not gonna include in the sound sense, it's just kind of on its own category because it doesn't really fit anywhere, but solitude sometimes is the most cozy <laughs> and important self-care thing you can do for yourself. Sometimes you just need to remove yourself from everything, from social media, from family, from friends, from significant others, from anything, and that's totally fine. Give yourself the gift of solitude every once in a while. Use the time of solitude to recharge, to do what you want to do. And this is coming from an introvert who does recharge when they're alone, so maybe if you're an extrovert, this won't apply as much. And that's it. Thank you so much for getting cozy with me today. I have a bunch of links below based on things that I suggested, so have at it. And I'll see you next week, cozy pals.